Washington Journal continues. Now we want to introduce you to Richard Gage. He is the founder of a group called Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. Mr. Gage, what is that group? We are a group of 2,200 architects and engineers, a nonprofit organization dedicated to finding out what really happened at the World Trade Center with the destruction of all three towers on that day. And what do you have doubts about? Well, the architects and engineers that I represent have found evidence uh, that has not been told to the American people by the agencies tasked with explaining these, uh, the destruction of these towers, uh, evidence of controlled demolition, particularly with the third high-rise that collapsed on that day in the afternoon of 9-11, World Trade Center 7. We're looking forward to sharing with your viewers that evidence today. Well, let's look at a little bit of video that your group has put out, and you can explain it after we see it. Now, here we're going to show you a videotape of the collapse itself. Describe that. Now we go to videotape the collapse of this building. It's amazing. A, a amazing, incredible, pick your word. For the third time today, it's reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed, destroyed by well-placed dynamite to knock it down. Mr. Gage, that was Building 7, Dan Rather narrating on CBS Live. It sure was, and um, most uh, Americans are completely unfamiliar with this. In fact, architects and engineers uh, around the world uh, mostly all unfamiliar with the third worst structural failure in modern history. I mean, here is a 47-story skyscraper. At uh, 5.20 in the afternoon, it drops like a rock, and I mean this fast. Freefall acceleration, straight down, uniformly, symmetrically, as you saw, now, a building with 40,000 tons of structural steel cannot fall straight down like, like we saw due to normal office fires, the official reason given us by NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, without all 80 columns on each floor being removed simultaneously and then synchronistically timed floor by floor. So, Peter, we've seen this like the old hotels in Las Vegas, and as our viewers just saw, it looks exactly like a controlled demolition. But NIST tells us, no, this came down due to normal office fires. So you can begin to see the problem right off the bat. Normal office fires have never brought down a skyscraper ever before. We have steel frame fireproof skyscrapers for a very good reason. And they have protected our towers uh, for a long, long time. So the 2,200 architects and engineers that I represent around the world in over 300 presentations now in 32 countries and 82 American cities, over th they, they, have, they present the evidence for the explosive demolition. And that evidence is seen not only in the videos of the buildings, but it's heard by the first responders uh, who cite uh, uh, the e explosions in, in this building's destruction, who cite the pools of molten iron uh, flowing like lava, they say, uh, and in fact, Leslie Robertson himself, the World Trade Center structural engineer, cites a river of steel flowing. Now, these are, these are e evidence of temperatures exceeding 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Office fires can't even get a thousand degrees short of that. So we have a serious problem, very serious, and in the accountability under the official story of those extremely high temperatures and evidence of molten iron documented by FEMA itself in the first report, Appendix C in the FEMA report, May of 2002, which documents hot sulfur corrosion. Uh, in fact, the author of that report, Jonathan Barnett, says the ends of the beams were partially evaporated. Now that takes 4,000 degree temperatures. The only thing that we're aware of that can create that is 
thermite. Thermite is an incendiary used by the military to cut through steel like a hot knife through butter. And there are patented cutter charges that do just that with thermite. So this is why we have to have a real investigation that looks at the evidence that NIST has ejected from the report after they came in in 2004 and uh, threw away the FEMA report. Now, Richard Gage, uh, NIST is uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology, is it, I believe? That's correct, yes. Um, you're talking about their report. Now, you question the falling of Building 7, the way it fell. Are you questioning how the Twin Towers fell as well? There are very serious questions about the Twin Towers. Once we look at World Trade Center 7, which most people don't know anything about, and see how obvious the freefall symmetrical destruction is, and how that matches exactly a controlled demolition, and how the official story cannot possibly be true, we're ready then, maybe, to take a look at a, the other subject that you bring up, the Twin Towers, uh, with a little bit more of an open mind, because most of us feel like we know how the Twin Towers came down because we have been given the official story. Most architects and engineers don't even question the story that NIST has provided. Um, and uh, when they do, however, see the evidence in the Twin Towers, uh, like Building 7, uh, they do end up agreeing with us by a show of hands, overwhelmingly, and many of them sign our petition. Uh, again, 2,200 architects and engineers now demanding a real investigation. So that evidence is certainly available in the videos, uh, for instance, in the, of the North Tower. Uh, we're told that this upper block of 10 stories, 15 stories, above the point of jet plane impacts in the North Tower, that upper block drove the rest of the building down to the ground. We have a few problems with this story, however. Uh, chiefly, uh, that's not what the videos show whatsoever. That upper portion is destroying itself before there's any downward motion uh, to, to dr drive uh, the rest of the building down to the ground. In, four, in the first four seconds, it's completely destroyed, liquefied, if you will. The structure is completely shattered. There's nothing left to drive the rest of the building down. And yet what we see after four seconds is exactly what the first responders are describing, hundreds of them, uh, in the oral histories uh, doc uh, taken and documented by Thomas Von Essen, the fire commissioner. They say, uh, pop, 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 all the way around, like a belt, all these explosions. They're describing explosions. They're hearing explosions. They're explosions throughout the building, yet none of these hundreds of eyewitness testimony of explosions are included in the official report. But what we see is, like, like they describe, a belt, all these explosions laterally driving four-ton perimeter wall sections, structural steel sections, laterally 60 miles an hour in every direction, landing 600 feet away. Isolated, freely flying structural steel sections. This takes an incredible lateral force, uh, up to uh, enough force to eject a, or fire a, 200-pound cannonball three miles. Okay. We also see explosions below uh, that. Mr. Gage, I apologize for interrupting. I just want to let our viewers know we're going to take a lot of phone calls, and we're going to begin that in just a second. We invited Mr. Gage on this program because from time to time, regular viewers of the journal know that we get phone calls asking about Building 7, regardless of what segment we're talking about. And uh, so we thought we'd, we'd investigate this group and, and uh, give them a chance to have their say. Uh, and I want to start with this tweet, Mr. Gage, and it kind of goes to the why. And this is Jim at Lake Gaston. Who gains from this building falling? Why would someone want to demolish it? I think uh, criminal investigators who were trained at uh, looking at four suspects in, in, in such massive uh, criminal controlled demolitions like these obviously were um, have to be uh, employed to look at the means, the motive, and the opportunity. Who benefited? Cui bono? Uh, these are the questions that enterprising journalists and criminal investigators should be asking, but in large measure are not 
for whatever reason. Uh, the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth are tasked with the what. Um, and those, those questions you ask, why, uh, have to also be answered uh, by those who are trained to uh, find suspects with, uh, those with motives and, and find a motive, too. Let's take some calls, Mr. Gage. Max in Milford, Indiana. Please go ahead. Hello. Thank you, C-SPAN, for having Mr. Gage on to tell the inconvenient truth about 9-11 because our whole foreign policy and much of our domestic policies today are all based on 9-11. And there are so many questions to be asked and answered about 9-11, like where is the airplane debris at Shanksville, Pennsylvania? Where are the four black boxes from the airplanes? Why did the Bush administration fight an investigation? Uh, why did the 47-story World Trade Center Building 7 collapse? Why were military and political people told not to fly? Who scheduled the hijacking war games on 9-11? Where was NORAD? Who told them to stand down? These are just a few of the questions that need answering. Thank you. Well, I, I agree with the caller. Uh, 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 there's, these are some serious and very important questions that Americans, millions of them, are asking, uh, but not getting enough airtime. And we appreciate C-SPAN's dedication to journalism uh, and, and finally, uh, focusing on this subject, because after all, two wars were started as a result of 9-11. We've lost 6,000 soldiers. A million um, people in the Middle East have been killed in these wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. We've lost precious civil liberties through legislation, and our economy has been wrecked. If there's any question about what happened at the World Trade Center and the other questions the caller is asking about, then we've got to have a real investigation. Richard Gage, next call for you comes from Alice in Morganville, New Jersey. Hi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Everything you are saying is questions I have as somebody who worked there for 24 years and was there for the 93 incident. Um, nobody ever brings up uh, uh, Giuliani. Uh, we had a, uh, uh, could Felipe Pete walk between the buildings, yet the mayor, the biggest mouth, never said after the first building was hit, clear out the second building. I don't care what size plane that they thought it was. Or with the president reading my pet goat. So please continue to uh, uh, investigate. I lost so many dear friends. Uh, I wasn't working at, any longer at the uh, Trade Center. Thank you. Richard well, thank you. I, I do appreciate the additional questions raised by the callers uh, today. Of course, our focus is on the science of what happened. Uh, we're, we want to know how did 400 structural steel connections give way every second during the seven-second freefall collapse of World Trade Center 7. Uh, th their computer animation that NIST uh, made to prove uh, how their theory uh, developed, uh, that is the uh, buckling of column number 79 uh, at the 12th floor where the worst fires were said to be. Um, however, those fires were out burned out over an hour before uh, the building ever collapsed. So they could not have caused the thermal expansion that NIST cites as initiating this collapse. Uh, NIST also has a serious problem in fabricating evidence and not including key structural components in their computer model, which they will not release, citing that it would jeopardize public safety were they to release uh, the computer models and the structural drawings uh, for Building 7. Uh, in fact, the architects and engineers who, like us, uh, who are responsible for public safety, have to have this information, of course, in order to ensure that public safety.
Now, Richard Gage, uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology, after their investigation of Building 7, put out a full report, and it, uh, when you read it, it, it seems pretty frank and open. In fact, they, they ask themselves questions, or they ask the questions and then answer them, such as, is it possible that thermite or thermate created to the collapse of World Trade Center 7? Their answer in here is, to apply thermite to a large steel column, approximately 1.13 pounds of thermite would be needed to heat and melt each pound of steel for a steel column that weighs approximately 1,000 pounds per foot, at least 100 pounds of thermite would need to be placed around the column, ignited and remain in contact with the vertical steel surface as the thermite reaction took place. This is for one column. Presumably, more than one column would have been prepared with thermite if this approach were to be used. It is unlikely that 100 pounds of thermite or more could have been carried into World Trade Center 7 and placed around columns without being detected either prior to 9-11 or during that day. Well, the question, one of them, would be who would be detecting this? Of course, we want an investigation of the security company under whose noses would have to have been brought uh, several uh, tons of, of thermite, as a matter of fact. Now, the, 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 the question, uh, the answer is quite cute, actually, because they completely ignore the patented thermite cutter charges, which issue thermite through a channeled uh, device um, issuing uh, a mi uh, in milliseconds uh, molten iron cutting through structural steel. Uh, this is very well documented, and you don't just pour thermite against a column. You, it has to be contained and directed in cutter charges. So we'd be looking for that evidence. In fact, what we see, what FEMA documents, is molten iron. In fact, molten concrete as well, uh, which, which takes 3,000 degrees uh, of temperature. Where does that come from? It can only come from thermite, an incendiary used by the military, again, to cut through steel like a hot knife through butter. So the evidence is there for thermite, uh, and cu patented cutter charges are, in fact, um, uh, made with consolidated thermite. All that would be left is molten iron. And indeed, that's what's found in the, in the basements of the Twin Towers in the debris pile under World Trade Center 7, and it was not included in the official uh, report by NIST uh, comprising 1,000 pages of obfuscation and uh, actually lies. Next call for Richard Gage, Eric, Antioch, California. Hi, I'd just like to say that uh, I really enjoy C-SPAN and uh, there's been a lot of callers a lot of times that I've heard calling about this issue and I'd like to thank C-SPAN for allowing this to come up and uh, and uh, congratulations to all the people's calls, finally bringing it forward. And that's all I have to say. We'll move on to Cologne, Germany. This is Sinan calling in from Cologne. Yeah, hello. Thank you for taking my call, Mr. Gage. As uh, we all know, there were many eyewitnesses. I called them crime scene witnesses on that morning of 9-11. And indeed, it was one of the biggest crime scenes in history. I know you're not just only in contact with architects and engineers, but also with lawyers. What I want to know, once it comes for a new independent investigation, if it's just for Building 7 or all three buildings, would it, would it be possible to consider such testimonies of, let me say, key eyewitnesses like Barry Jennings? <clears throat> As we all know, he survived the explosions in Building 7 even before, before any tower even did collapse. I mean, it's just a, isn't it just a regular procedure? to hear crime scene witnesses? Yeah, there are several in witnesses, in fact, uh, hearing explosions. Uh, Barry Jennings is certainly one of them. Unfortunately, he lost his life uh, the day before the final report came out uh, about Building 7, in which, of course, they deny explosions, which he was uh, testifying to in several different films and on live camera. Um, we also have Kevin McPadden, a former Air Force medic, uh, who was a first responder, who actually heard a countdown, uh, three, two, one, and then heard exp felt explosions under his feet. He said it was uh, like you needed to grab onto something. Uh, he knows an explosion when he hears it. 
um, other fire firefighters or policemen uh, hearing explosions. In fact, we have uh, policemen moving people away from Building 7 saying, the building's about to blow up, flame and debris coming down. Now, how do they know the building is about to blow up? The fires, which there were a few small scattered fires in this building, which again have never brought down a skyscraper uh, steel frame ever. Um, they're saying uh, it's going to come down. They're expecting it to come down. And in this case, they're expecting it to blow up. In the case of the Twin Towers, CNN and the BBC uh, actually announced, uh, excuse me, in the case of the Building 7, uh, CNN announced uh, the destruction of that building in the morning, uh, several hours before it came down. Uh, and in the case of the BBC, they announced it 20 minutes before it actually happened. They later apologized for this grievous error, citing the confusing events of the day. Um, something is going on here that needs to be investigated. Why can't we get government of governmental officials to investigate that? Every one of our CNN viewers today should be calling their congressmen and finding out, and senators, finding out why they're not investigating the worst mass murder in U.S. history and the third worst structural failure in modern history. This is absolutely an extraordinary and unacceptable uh, situation. And that's why we have 2,200 architects and engineers uh, all about this all over the country. Richard Gage, what do you do for a living and when did you come to believe what you believe? Well, I founded Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth eight years ago uh, when I heard on the radio uh, another researcher, David Ray Griffin, now the author of 10 books on the subject, who delves, by the way, into many of the other issues that uh, the co earlier callers have brought up outside of the World Trade Center, which is our narrower scope of, of uh, investigation. So I had to dedicate myself uh, to this all-important task because I found that most Americans are unaware of the evidence. It's on the Internet. It's available. It makes sense. It's comprised from the video testimony, the I video uh, uh, documentation, the eyewitness testimony, uh, and it, it, it's not something that's made up. Uh, we are talking about evidence that's capable of of, of, of uh, being brought into a court and standing up uh, I I against um, the, 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 uh, the, the process, the legal process. So uh, let's, like the other caller said, let's, let's get it going. Let's get some effort, uh, as we are, in fact, um, uh, pursuing various legal efforts, including against NIST themselves for fraudulent building reports. And back to the National Institute of Standards and Technology report. An emerg this is the question. An emergency responder caught in World Trade Center 7 between the 6th and 8th floors said he heard two loud booms. Isn't that evidence that there was an explosion? NIST answer. The sound levels reported by all witnesses do not match the sound level of an explosion that would have been required to cause the building, the collapse of the building. Yeah, they actually say uh, it would be a loud boom. You'd hear it for miles. But what they're referring to is high-energy explosives, which are normally used to bring down high-rises, like the old hotels in Las Vegas, which we've all seen, which Building 7 looks exactly like. But if they used thermite, an incendiary, which operates by heat instead of gas expansion and force and loud bangs and bright flashes, thermite instead uh, would be uh, much quieter. And, but there would still be some uh, uh, explosions heard, which in fact were heard. Laura tweets in, what do the 9-11 truthers think happened in Pennsylvania and at the Pentagon? Were they terrorist attacks? Well, the researchers uh, such as David Ray Griffin who have looked into uh, these matters have found serious questions that also require a real investigation. And we're talking about a real investigation which offers immunity to bring forth witnesses, a subpoena power to force them to come forth that looks at all the evidence with an open mind and with the scientific method. When we get such an investigation that we can actually trust, 
unlike the 9-11 Commission, by the way, which uh, mo to at least two of those members uh, said uh, that they were set up to fail by the Bush administration. One of them, Max Cleland, resigned, citing this is a national scandal. Um, this is pretty extraordinary evidence. In fact, the attorney for the 9-11 Commission, John Farmer, cited that there was a, a decision at some point not to tell the American people the truth. The American people deserve the truth, Peter. Mike, Safety Harbor, Florida. Go ahead. Uh, yes, good morning, C-SPAN. First of all, Mr. Gage, I just want to give you the utmost uh, of compliment. You're a true American hero, and my hats are off to you. Um, the very first caller was right when he listed the, uh, um, the lengthy list of anomalies. Um, the science for the destruction of the Twin Towers through explosives such as nanothermite is there. It's overwhelming. I personally have spent hundreds of hours of my personal time going over various uh, information through Shanksville, the Pentagon, as well as the Twin Towers. Um, Mike Rupert uh, did a, an excellent presentation that you can pull up on YouTube where he actually goes through who would actually have benefited from the Twin Towers uh, being brought down. Uh, he discusses topics of of uh, insider trading that went on that day through the various airlines. Um, he talks about defense contracting. There's a lot of things that he touches on that, that have a lot of credibility. The one thing we need to stay away from is partisanship, because until we can prove who actually is involved, we should try to avoid dropping large names. Um, because it's counterproductive, although I do believe the way you do, there's a lot of questions that the Bush administration needs to answer. Um, my last question for you is, I was curious, have you personally or, or your family or anyone with the organization, have you had any threats, uh, harm to your life or anything of that nature? And I'll take your uh, answer uh, off the air. Thank you very much for C-SPAN. I'm delighted to... Uh, say that I have not had any problems uh, with threats and I, I'm I'm eternally grateful for that I don't need that in my life I'm just a normal everyday architect and person who is very concerned about our country uh, as an American I am deeply disturbed about the state of affairs when a deception on the scale of these three criminal controlled demolitions can occur and most Americans certainly not all fortunately have been deceived and most of our elected representatives are unwilling to tackle uh, the the very serious issues uh, before them uh, such as the finding of nanothermite, which the caller mentioned, in the World Trade Center dust. Small red-gray chips, tons of them, uh, all together, found by an independent team of scientists led by Niels Harrett in Copenhagen, with uh, nanoparticles of iron oxide and aluminum powder embedded in them. Uh, very clearly, the most advanced uh, uh, materials made in uh, s extremely sophisticated uh, defense department contracting laboratories. This material should not be found in all the World Trade Center dust, and yet there it is, and unexplained uh, by the official uh, 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 analysis of, of the dust samples by R.J. Lee and the USGS. Uh, which, by the way, also found evidence of molten iron in the dust, which cannot be accounted for by the official story. Of course, jet fuel office fires can't possibly uh, account uh, for temperatures exceeding 2,800 degrees. Office fires can't even get up to 1,800 degrees. From the NIST report, some people have said that a failure at one column should not have produced a symmetrical fall like this one. What is NIST's answer to those assertions? World Trade Center 7's collapse, NIST says, viewed from the exterior, most videos were taken from the north, did appear to fall almost uniformly as a single unit. This occurred because the interior failures that took place 
did not cause the exterior framing to fail until the final stages of the building collapse. The interior floor framing and columns collapsed downward and pulled away from the exterior frame. There were clues that internal damage was taking place prior to the downward movement of the exterior frame. Here's another one of NIST's cute um, uh, answers to an extremely difficult question. Uh, you cannot have the interior of a 47-story, 40,000-ton structural steel frame fail without pulling in the side of the building and causing massive warpage on the exterior perimeter structural steel system. It can't happen. Uh, they're talking, once again, in their computer models, which betrays their own theory, uh, that we have 400 structural steel connections that have to fail in their computer models in order to get that interior to fail and then the exterior. We don't even have massive window breakage on the exterior. It can't happen. Uh, in fact, what does happen is the penthouse drops, the main penthouse, a half a second prior to the overall. So just half a second prior, the penthouse drops, then the overall building drops again. How fast? Free fall acceleration. That fast, seven seconds. Total structural shattering of the entire structural steel system, beam from column almost. So this can't happen unless all of those are compromised. See. When you have a, a pile driver that's driving the rest of the building down, it's doing work. Uh, in this case, it's falling at free fall, meaning all of its energy is, is transferred to kinetic energy or motion. There's no energy left to do any work, such as driving the rest of the building down to the ground. That work had to have been had to have come has to have come from another force. Again, that force is uh, most likely a thermite incendiary for which we have the evidence in the rubble pile. John, Jonesboro, Georgia, go ahead with your question or comment for Richard Gage. Uh, yes, Mr. Gage, I have uh, a couple of questions. Uh, where did you get your degree in architect? Uh, also, what engineering degrees do you hold? And I would like to personally know when your book is out. I've been a steel worker for 50 years, and I can assure you that all this centrifugal force and the downfall and this and that, hey, if you put enough weight on a building, it's like, yo, know, you got a paper building. You drop a five-pound weight on it and see if it'll crush you. So, yeah, I, well, I that's, I appreciate I that. I, I, I went I to, to I went I to you, a, just a second, Mr. Gage. The book. Thank you. Oh, go, thank you. Go ahead. I appreciate that. Um, we, I, I went to the University of Southern California uh, in 1986. I had my degree and licensed in 1988, a uh, member of the American Institute of Architects. And we have more than 70, uh, I think 80 now, structural engineers signed on. In fact, there are some high-rise structural engineers. There's several, at least a dozen, high-rise architects, experienced architects in, in these buildings that have attested to the fact that you cannot have a, a 40,000 ton structural steel system and a, not a paper building um, uh, fall at free fall. I mean, we're talking about 80 columns. In order to have this building fall symmetrically, all 80 columns have to be severed virtually at once. You tell me, as a steel worker, how that happens, and I'll tip my hat to you. Daniel, Atlanta, good morning. Good morning. This is Daniel Bland. Um, I joined the Army three months after 9-11, a uh, decision that nearly cost me my life when a rocket propelled grenade impacted 15 meters behind me. So first off, I just want to say, uh, Mr. Gage and the 2200 ar other architects and engineers that have signed this petition are heroes in my book. I'd also like to give a, a props to C-SPAN for uh, bringing light to this important information. And I'd like to end with a question for Peter. Peter, it's apparent that you've been given these uh, talking points from NIST, and you, you stated earlier you thought that their response was transparent, um, which to me seemed kind of a dance around the point Mr. Gage made about 
NIST refusing to release the input data used in their computer models. I would love to hear your comment and how you think that's transparent and how it serves the interest of truth and in finding out what really happened so that we can end these wars that are killing innocent people around the world to this day. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Mr. Gage, 2,200 architects and engineers signed on. How many, how many architects and engineers are there registered with uh, A AIA and these other groups? How many are in the U.S.? What we've found is that most of them, and I think there's about 80,000 in the American Institute of Architects, most every one of them, first of all, are unfamiliar with the evidence, particularly World Trade Center structural, uh, World Trade Center uh, Building 7. Um, and this is the third worst structural failure in modern history, and yet architects and engineers are not familiar with it. So when we travel, we get them in our audiences, and just like uh, lay uh, people in the audience, they end up agreeing with us uh, by an overwhelming majority. I mean, like 90 to 100 percent of them when they see this building coming down, which, by the way, they can see also on our website, ae911truth.org. That's ae911truth.org, on which uh, people can see the building uh, coming down and, and, of course, in the exact manner of classic controlled demolition. So. The problem is, A, architects are uh, forming, uh, uh, expressing opinions, uh, a lot of them, uh, and engineers, uh, before they see the evidence. Those opinions are uninformed. You have to see the evidence to have an informed opinion. When they do, uh, they end up agreeing with us. I think that's extremely important. It's also telling, why are they not informed? Why hasn't uh, other... Um, uh, media outlets such as CNN, MSNBC, CBS, etc., shown the World Trade Center Building 7 to the American people? Why haven't the American Society of Civil Engineers and the American Institute of Architects uh, educated their own professionals about the third worst structural failure in modern history? Why are they so uninformed? I think these questions are extremely important as well. We're doing our best, of course, um, but in, until um, we, and, and we are communicating uh, with uh, the leadership of the American Institute of Architects directly now and expecting to uh, educate uh, the 80,000 architects uh, in the, the membership that I belong to. So I, I think we'll, that'll make incredible headway toward the problem uh, that you're citing, Peter. And uh, Richard Gage, let's close with this question from Boring File Clerk. It's tweeted in. I've asked it once and will ask it again. What is your theory about what happened and why do you think it happened? The scientific evidence shows that incendiaries, and in the case of the World Trade Center building uh, one and two, the Twin Towers, uh, thermite and nanothermite and high energy explosives most likely, brought these towers down in an explosive controlled demolition. Uh, in the case of World Trade Center 7, a classic implosion. In the case of the Twin Towers, a very explosive uh, event. Uh, this is what the evidence shows. It's very clear and overwhelming. And uh, we're asking all Americans to first get informed, and second, uh, and you can get informed at our website uh, and with our DVD, which is called 9-11 Explosive Evidence Experts Speak Out. Just Google Experts Speak Out. It will come right up. And once people are informed, uh, they can tell others because we've, this is a grassroots organization largely operating because of uh, what amounts to a censorship on the part of most mainstream media. We praise C-SPAN for having the courage to, to bring forth uh, the, the evidence uh, on this morning. But our effort is to educate the American people so that they can be informed, they can demand a real investigation, and then we'll let the chips fall where, where they may. We don't have a conspiracy theory. We're bringing the evidence. It's up to others to investigate and find out who may or may not have been responsible.
Richard Gage, founder, architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. Thank you for your time this morning.